Hi everyone. There's another important aspect to properly documenting your self-employment expenses and your income. And that is, I'm a firm believer for a typical small business person who is my client that they use credit cards to document their expenses wherever possible. One, as Frank Abagnale notes, a person who I have a great deal of trust and respect for, credit cards are good for paying expenses, especially in the event of some type of dispute over whether the product or service rendered was properly rendered or defective in some way. Paying via credit card is like having an extra level of insurance in case of some kind of dispute with your service provider or provider of products, goods, or goods. I believe in use of credit cards, although there are some interesting payment mechanisms in 2019 and onwards, and a number of different types of cryptocurrency and other things that I think are also have merit. Right now, in 2019, I would say for my clients, especially ones starting out, that having a credit card in the name of the company, not a personal credit card, but a credit card and line of credit, which is associated with the LLC and the LLC's uh, EIN number, not the individual and not the individual social security number, so that the LLC has its own separate credit balance. I think that's important. I think that also structurally is a better way to track expenses because it's a key principle of this particular playlist and of working with the IRS that the thing that arouses their attention the most and causes them to look closer at someone, potentially for an audit, is when they suspect that there is an overlap between personal expenses and business expenses. And one way to prevent that is to have a credit card for the business, separate from personal credit cards. And remember to use both appropriately. And if you occasionally make a mistake and have to use one or have the other, make sure that when you're totaling and tallying up all of your data that you're getting ready to forward to your accountant for your Schedule C, that you take out the entries that don't belong. Again, this is in compliance with, compliance with a kind of a larger theme of this playlist for people who are self-employed. And that is that IRS has certain expectations for you and they're not waivable. They are not any waived on the basis of anybody's personal philosophy. They are a requirement. And in some ways it affects my ability as an attorney and counsel to help you and represent you if you have properly complied with IRS requirements. The discipline in doing so makes your business more attractive to outside investors. But that's, setting this, that's kind of separate from the main theme of this playlist, which is Schedule C issues. How to identify a Schedule C, how to properly format your data so that it fits well in a Schedule C, and how to make it so that you make the job of your CPA or accountant easier so that they charge you less, so that things take less time when it comes time to do the tax returns. And also, the discipline of doing this year-round will make you a better and more astute business person. Recognizing and knowing where and how these expenses get allocated and where they're located and which are deductible and which are not is a skill that I think a good business person should have. But setting that aside, I again hold by the original principle that people blow this off and some of them are successful business persons. Some of them get by just fine. But that doesn't mean that it's right. That just means you got away with it. Two, in this case, the IRS is not your friend. Nobody's saying that. But the IRS is trying to help you. The IRS does not want to tax you on income that you did not earn. And they don't want to tax you on income where there were appropriate deductions available. But it's incumbent upon the business owner, the person, the individual, the business, to know what those deductions are. And yes, the default assumption is with the IRS that, working with the IRS, how can I best say it, that um, 
if you did not put an appropriate deduction in there, there must be some good reason why. And so you don't have those expenses. They won't. You can file amended returns later and come back and say that I did have a lot more expenses than what I reported. But it doesn't look good. Report them from the beginning. Tell your CPA and your accountant right from the beginning and keep track of them. And one of the best ways is to use credit cards because as you log into your account, you can get access to all of your credit card statements for the entire calendar year and the year before that and even the year before that. And you can download these without much difficulty, and I'm going to make a video showing you how I do it with my own credit cards. You can download these into an Excel spreadsheet and then reformat them whatever way you want um, in order to properly comply with the main elements of a Schedule C. So you can organize them and format the data any way you want and let Excel do the work and then hand that to your CPA. It'll save him time and it'll save you money. That's why I'm another reason why I'm a firm believer in credit cards because there's a very valid and reliable transaction record. And other forms of payment, checking accounts have that, that's true, and you'll need to occasionally work from there too. But once someone cashes the check, you don't have the opportunity to go back and then stop payment on that check later, or it's very difficult to do so. With credit cards, you can repudiate a payment if you feel that their merchandise was uh, non-conforming, or if the services or whatever was provided were not uh, in compliance with the original agreement. Credit cards give some forms of protection to small business that are worth having. There are other things coming along that are, are going to be very good at this too. But one of the things that I have a concern about why I would not pay my vendors using Waymo is there are some problems with other people on that person's mobile phone being able to access the account through Waymo. This is another issue and why it is that I think credit cards are a little bit safer, but in general, our payment system and all the convenience of online payment systems has some real severe security vulnerabilities. And credit cards do as well. I'm not disagreeing with that. Of all of the different forms of payment, at least now in 2019, credit cards are likely to be the most accepted, the most honored, and the most understood, the most routine. Waymo is coming, and there's going to be a good format of that that properly addresses the issue that Waymo being on a mobile device is inherently vulnerable to security breaches. I expect they're working on ways to get around that, but the problem is there's only so much security that can be provided on a mobile device. Now, if you pay for credit card on, from your mobile device, if you pay using a credit card, you have more protections than just what's inside of the mobile device. So I'm a fan of making your payments to your vendors using credit cards. I, as a service provider, my law firm takes credit cards, and I'm glad we do. It's the most popular form of payment by far, outnumbering regular checks by postal mail in a ratio of about 20 to 1. And one reason is I don't like waiting for a check. And I don't start work until that check gets to me and gets to my law firm. And in some cases, that might be a while. I don't have control over the postal system, but with an instantaneous settlement of a transaction with a credit card, I like that a lot better. And there's going to be other good currencies, too. There are cryptocurrencies coming along and other forms of payment. I think there's one called Zelle and then Waymo uh, and probably so many more that I'm not even going to try to name them right now. But for you small businesses, let's start with you paying your other vendors and service providers using credit cards and at early as possible in your processes arranging that you can take credit cards as payment yourself. I think it's an important distinction and when I'm working and looking for different service providers for things, and my law firm has to hire a lot of different styles of service providers. This is a factor. Do they take my credit card? If not, I may go to someone else who might be of even lesser quality because I don't want to write checks, I don't want to wait, I want to know that the transaction is settled, and I have an easier time tracking my expenses using my credit card as my base core uh, place that I operate from. I hope this makes sense, and I hope this has been of some help to you. Thanks for watching. Let me know any other topics you want me to discuss. This YouTube channel is to help you. This is for information. 
I want to hear from you and I want to know what things are on your mind. 